Hey guys, I can tell you're all still just a little bit dazed and confused because you're still watching my videos. But either way, today we're going to be looking at how to set up a PlayStation 4 controller on your PC, both for Linux and for Windows. I don't have a prop for Windows, but I guess you can look at my window. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. I'm sure. Plenty of you guys have already scoffed at this video title, thinking something like, who needs a game controller? I'm not a console pleb. Then this video is probably not for you, and that's okay. But there are still plenty of us who do like having a game controller for a more relaxing experience. And in my opinion, it's much better for couch gaming to have a controller compared to having some sort of wireless keyboard and mouse. Anyways, that discussion is not for this video. Like I mentioned earlier, this video we're going to be looking at connecting a PlayStation 4 DualShock controller to your PC for both Windows and Linux. Overall, it's a pretty simple task, and there are plenty of tutorials already out there online on how to do so, but I figured I would condense everything into one video for your pleasure. Thankfully, this controller does not require any special drivers or attention after connecting to your PC, assuming you're using Steam. If you're not using Steam, you may need to look into installing other drivers or doing some other configuration, but we'll look into that later. So why don't we start with Windows, since I'm willing to bet most of you are using Windows. First, let's go to Bluetooth settings, and I'm getting there by going to the drop down in my system tray and then double clicking on the Bluetooth icon. Make sure Bluetooth is on. Then we can go ahead and click add device, add Bluetooth device. And now while searching for devices, Press and hold the share and PlayStation buttons on your controller until the light is double flashing. Once the controller is double flashing, you should see an option for a wireless controller on the Bluetooth devices. Click that and then it should pair. At this point, you should notice that the light on the back of your controller is now a solid color. In this case, mine's a red light because I've already configured it with Steam to be red. But yours will likely be white if you haven't yet configured it with Steam or the DS4 Windows driver. Pretty easy, right? Now let's look at Linux. Okay, so now for Linux. This will be a little bit different for everyone, depending on your operating system and desktop environment. Here I'm using Pop! OS 2004 with GNOME 3.38, but this process should be very similar, regardless of your distribution and desktop environment. So first I'm gonna open up my Bluetooth settings, and I'm doing that by going to the top right drop down for GNOME, clicking on Bluetooth and then Bluetooth settings. Make sure Bluetooth is on. GNOME should automatically start searching for devices. Now is where we need to press the Share and PlayStation buttons to get it to double flash again. Eventually a wireless controller option should appear. You click that to pair it, and after a few seconds it should pair. That was pretty easy too, right? Are you starting to notice a pattern? There is still one small step that you need to do with the command line, and this is where Linux deviates from Windows albeit very slightly. You need to add yourself to the input group and you can do that by opening up a terminal and then typing sudo usermod dash a capital G input and then your username. Now press enter and you'll be prompted to enter your password because you need admin to do this and then you'll need to log out and then log back in to get the group settings to apply. Now I'm not sure if this is still needed it really just depends on how your distro handles controllers, but I've done it whenever I've set up a new system for gaming and I haven't had any issues with it. So here we are. Now if you're okay with using a wire to connect your controller to your computer, you can use a micro USB cable to do so. Just grab any old micro USB cable off of Amazon, plug the small end into your controller, plug the larger end into your computer, and whoopee look at that. So easy. It's so easy even your mother could do it. Cool. So now that your controller is connected to your computer, you now need to tell Steam to use it. So to do this, you can go to the upper left corner and click on Steam, click on Settings, go to Controller, General Controller Settings, and now you need to select PlayStation Configuration Support. And here you can also select other things like Xbox and generic gamepad configuration support. After that, you need to click back, hit OK, and then you should be good to go to use your controller on Steam games. If you're looking to use your controller on games outside of Steam, and this includes games from other platforms like GOG, Uplay, and others, you'll need to look into some other drivers to get your controller working. 
For Windows, you can install DS4 Windows, which gives you both the driver you need to use the controller and also an application to configure your controller. Everything from lighting and assigning functions to the buttons. You even have the option to start the DS4 Windows service on startup. You'll just want to make sure that you disable DS4 Windows if you plan on using the Steam driver for Steam games. I haven't tested this myself, but I have heard that having both enabled at the same time can cause issues. As for Linux, you can install DS4 DRV, which installs the driver needed to use the controller. Honestly, I haven't used the DS4 DRV driver before, but it seems pretty simple to set up as all you need to do is install it, reboot, and connect your controller, and you should be good to go. Now that I've shown you how to connect the controller to your computer, let's discuss why you would want to use it in the first place. Me personally, I've started using these controllers a few years ago when I was getting more into PC gaming and wanted a game controller to connect to both Windows and Linux. Being a heavy Linux user at the time, these controllers had better out-of-the-box support, meaning I didn't have to fuss with any weird drivers or any weird dongles to connect the controller. As long as I had Bluetooth or a micro USB cable, I was able to connect it and play games. And this is all coming from someone who never once purchased a PlayStation device in my life. I know the Steam controller really is not that bad, considering they do ship a USB adapter with their controllers, and the Xbox One controller might be better these days, but the PlayStation 4 controllers also come with rechargeable batteries, whereas the Steam and Xbox One controllers by default require AA batteries. They can be replaced with rechargeable battery packs, but why should I go through the effort if I don't need to? Lastly, one thing that I had not considered until my girlfriend mentioned it recently was the PS4 controllers are a little bit smaller and feel a little bit better in her smaller hands, although her hands aren't that much smaller than mine are. But either way, your mileage may vary on that front, but the gist of the point is you should go with whatever controller you like the best. I know that's very anticlimactic and not like, oh, this one's the best, whatever else, but if you prefer the feel of one over the other, then that's going to make your gaming experience so much better than having a controller that you don't like quite as much. Personally, the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 controllers both feel fine to me, but the Steam controllers just feel bulky and awkward. It's almost like they hadn't actually had someone test drive it while playing games before they made it and shipped it out. This video is not here to say that these controllers are the end-all be-all, and you should run out right now and replace all of your controllers with PlayStation 4 controllers. All I'm saying here is that there are reasons to consider using them if you hadn't thought of that before. Wrapping up. Keep an eye out for future videos just like this. I do plan on doing some more basic tutorial-ish videos similar to this one, and I do also want to look at the upcoming controllers that will be released with the Xbox Series... Series... Whatever the new Xbox is called, and the new PlayStation 5. That's actually going to wrap it up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Go like the video, subscribe to the channel, watch one of the videos down below, or just do whatever it is you need to do to make yourself feel happy. Either way, I will catch you in the next one.